Welcome to Beautiful, Bad and Bazaar. Thank you for joining me here today at St Helen's Churchyard on the Isle of Wight. It's an absolutely gloriously beautiful day and I'm looking forward to showing you around. Today we're visiting the grave of the actress Valerie Gaunt. If you're a fan of the Hammer House of Horror, you'll know what an icon Valerie was and still is. She continues to be to this day. Valerie set the standard of beauty, which is often referred to as Hammer Glamour. Valerie Sheila Gaunt was born on the 26th of June 1932 in Warwickshire. The only daughter of a wealthy businessman, she was educated at an exclusive boarding school and soon secured a place at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts with an overriding passion for theatre. Valerie graduated in 1951, moving straight into rep. She began appearing in a succession of stage productions, gaining enviable reviews. One of her many roles included the second Mrs De Winter in Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca in 1952. In 1956, Valerie made two television appearances. One was for ITV's Playhouse with Jean-Pierre Ormont and a guest starring role on the popular Dixon of Doc Green. I knew I'd done wrong. I did try to put it back. But it was to be two brief appearances on film that would make Valerie Gaunt a gothic horror icon. Valerie was spotted while appearing on Dixon of Doc Green by director Terence Fisher, who worked for Hammer Film Productions. He wanted Valerie for the role of Justine in the horror The Curse of Frankenstein, playing alongside Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. The movie and Valerie was a total success, which was swiftly followed by the film The Horror of Dracula in 1958. <laughs> Mr. Harker, you will help me. If it's at all possible. In Dracula, Valerie played a vampire and had the accolade of being the first person to bear fangs on screen, just moments before Christopher Lee appears with his own blood dripping fangs out. Cinema goers were both horrified and thrilled. Terence Fisher said, the public appetite for horror was insatiable. For connoisseurs of the macabre, Valerie gave it all. Her acting and beauty was terrifyingly fabulous. In 1957, Valerie was introduced to the strikingly good-looking stockbroker, Gerald Reddington. They were attracted to each other instantly and shared a deep religious faith. One year later, on the 17th of May 1958, the couple were married. Valerie wore her new mother-in-law's tiara as her something borrowed. In acting terms, Valerie once described herself as difficult merchandise. She said, I'm not a glamour girl. I haven't the right type of looks. My legs aren't long enough and I loathe posing for cheesecake pictures. Frankly, I think my appeal is earthy rather than glossy. Let's say I look better in a barn than in a boudoir. Hammer Productions could be forgiven for thinking they had a devilishly winning team, but Valerie was becoming disenchanted. She told a reporter five years after leaving RADA, she estimated that she'd been manhandled and beaten up more often than any other actress in the business. Plays like Johnny Belinda, No Room at the Inn and Wuthering Heights, to name just a few, provided Valerie with one horror after another. She said she was either getting beaten, tortured or murdered, stating, if I didn't have a death scene, I usually finished up in the lunatic asylum or a prison cell. Valerie recalled, they were good meaty roles, the type I had always dreamed of playing and a wonderful experience but I didn't realise the disastrous effect they were having on my nerves. Facing Christopher Lee in his spine-chilling makeup of fish scales, plastic and undertaker's wax as Frankenstein's monster was the last straw. Gerald recalled that after the premiere of Dracula, Valerie arrived home, kicked off her shoes and declared, well, thank goodness that's over. I'm never working again. 
Valerie did give up her acting career and she never made another film, but she did continue to work. Together, Valerie and Gerald had four children. Sadly, they lost one of their sons, Adam, to a heart condition at the age of just nine years old. Gerald eventually gave up his job as a stockbroker and at the age of 45, he became an ordained deacon. Valerie directed school plays and she taught drama to children. She also recorded audiobooks for the blind. Valerie also loved art and would paint watercolour portraits of children. In 1999, the couple had relocated to Sea View here on the Isle of Wight and were both very involved with the church and the community. Sadly, in later life, Valerie battled with Parkinson's disease. My own grandmother had Parkinson's, so I understand how this would have impacted Valerie and her family. Valerie Gaunt Reddington passed away from complications of Parkinson's and other conditions on the 27th of November 2016, aged 84. Her funeral was held at St Peter's Church, Seaview. After the funeral service at St Peter's Church, Seaview, Valerie was then interred here in this pretty cemetery at St Helen's Churchyard, overlooking stunning scenery. It's a particularly warm day and as you might hear, a little breezy too. But the atmosphere is bright and tranquil with birdsong in the air. So as I walked around this beautiful, beautiful cemetery, I see that the old part is really overgrown and full of wildlife um, and obviously the newer part is more manicured. What do you think? What do you like? Do you think that old cemeteries should be turned over to the wildlife? Um, the birds, the bees <laughs> and the flowers? Or do you think it should still be maintained and manicured? Let me know in the comments below what you think. I'd be really interested to know. So here we are at the grave of Valerie Sheila Gaunt Reddington, finally reunited with her beloved husband Gerald who passed away four years after his wife in 2020. I wonder if Valerie would be surprised that she's become such an icon in popular culture. Despite her career being so short, she has had a long lasting impact on the horror film genre. I also find it ironic that she didn't see herself as glamorous, glossy or a pin-up because she was a true beauty. Fans of gothic horror will always remember Valerie Gaunt's legendary performances as the Queen of Scream. Thank you for coming on this step back in time journey with us and I hope you've enjoyed the video today and we look forward to seeing you soon in the next video.